Okay, good morning. Welcome to One Million Cups. As you can tell, I'm still not Jason. Um, he is away this week at the headquarters of One Million Cups in Kansas City. So we're really hoping next week he comes back with loads of ideas and some more cups because we ran out of our One Million Cups cups that we give to people. So if you're not familiar, One Million Cups, um, every Wednesday at nine o'clock, all over the country, the goal is to have one million people drinking coffee at the same time while talking about small businesses or startups or businesses that have been going for five years or less. Um, so welcome. It was started by the Kaufman brothers. Um, just before we get started, I normally say who the coffee sponsor was, uh, but we made the coffee for you this morning. So hopefully you'll enjoy it because I don't know how to make American coffee, I just guess. Um, normally we've got a machine and I push the button and we get a coffee and at home I've got a different machine and I put the capsule in and push the button. Um, so hopefully I got it right uh, and it's not too terrible. Um, are there any announcements? If you have an announcement, what we're going to do is throw you the City of Rockford catch box and you can speak into it and then people on the live stream can hear you. So if you know of anything that's happening in the next week or two, uh, wave a hand or say something. No. Nothing. Bailey, you got anything? No. Okay. It's an eventful two weeks then, in the next two weeks. Um, we would like to say, if you are just starting and you're looking for somewhere to be based, we are gonna turn this space, which now has too many desks, into a hot desk area. So if you're thinking, I'd really like an office environment, I'd really like an office environment that has an adult-sized beanbag, this might be the place for you. Uh, it comes with a phone system, which we can give you a telephone number. Um, if you're interested in that, come talk to us afterwards. Today's speaker is Jocelyn Hare, who spoke exactly a year ago, we discovered. It was exactly a year ago, but you spoke in your capacity as the museum. So welcome back. Um, we know a little bit more about what she did because uh, we helped launch a website in January. So I'm really excited to find out how that went. So Jocelyn, come and introduce yourself. All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. I recognize many of you. So I'm Jocelyn Hare, and our company is Restoration Tools. We're located here in Rockford. A little bit of background on who we are. So many of you may be recognized Charlie Hare. He is one of the co-founders, along with our partner, Marcus Smith. Uh, between the three of us, we have over 40 years of combined experience in the disaster restoration industry. Why is that important? Well, we spent years and years in the industry doing the hard grunt work, the labor that the technicians are doing in the field, and we noticed a common trend over the years. We don't have tools designed specifically for us in the restoration industry. I'm going to play a little video for you. Uh, some of the processes, uh, well, so stepping back, electricians, plumbers all have their own lines of specialized tools. Restoration professionals do not. So through over the years, we all kind of uh, duct tape together, create our own things, and that's what inspired our new product that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and I'll give you an overview through this video of a current method and what our tool is doing to fix it. We would like to demonstrate the use of Restoration Tools' latest product, the aerator. With any clean water loss, instead of flood cutting or removing one to two feet of drywall around the room, after affected baseboard is removed, part of the mitigation process is to dry the walls through wall cavity drying or aeration. Currently, the standard way to aerate wall cavities is being demonstrated by this technician. As you can see, the technician is on his hands and knees on the wet carpet using an electric drill. Even though this is the industry standard way of performing <laughs> aeration, you can see the results are messy, time consuming, and potentially unsafe. Wet knees make for an unhappy restoration professional. With our tool, the aerator, this is a way of the past. 
The first step with the aerator is to remove the safety clips. Now, all that is necessary is to place the aerator up against the wet wall and strike it with the mallet. With this tool, the debris is pushed back behind the wall, eliminating the need for any cleanup. You can see this process makes aeration consistent, efficient, and safe. No more wet knees, uneven holes, or wet drywall that won't vacuum. Once done, the technician can load the aerator and flat bottom mallet into the custom carrying bag. They are now ready for the next loss. So what does that look like up close? Here on the left hand side you see a picture of the drilled hole. This again is for wall cavity drying, uh, very commonly done in this industry. But so you can see how unclean uh, and uneven that drill hole is. And next to it is the aerator. What is the aerator? It is this tool that we just launched in January. Uh, we are a new company, a new small business. Uh, again, our serve our uh, specialization was originally in the service side of the industry and now we've moved to the product side and it's very simple as already demonstrated you just walk along the mallet, hit the aerator with the mallet and it's creating a hole that's five eighths inches it's a perfectly sized hole for the industry because it works in conjunction with other drying systems so these are things that you know in new product development we have to keep in mind Our aerator, it's $349 to purchase, but in through time savings, cost savings, it pays for itself easily in the first two to three months of use. Its lifespan is three to five years at the minimum, although we have some prototypes like you saw in the video that have been going for the last five years. Now I say five years, so it's been pretty much exactly five years almost to the day that we started working on this product. Um, again, we started started in the services industry and now we're in the product industry and the first step we took was to go to Iger Lab here in town. They now work with NIU. They're a great resource to start with if you have inventions or ideas um, and they help bring it to market. Uh, from there, Illinois Bank and Trust came in and helped us with our funding, but that piece of the puzzle took four years. So it was just a year ago that we secured our funding so we could proceed with the manufacturing of the aerator. Um, and so if you have questions related to new product development, feel free to ask those. Uh, but we'll keep moving on. It might be a little hard to see, but in this industry, in restoration, you are paid by the function. So for every square foot of flooring that you extract or remove, for every linear foot of baseboard that is removed, you are billing specifically for that line item. And the pricing is dictated mainly by insurance companies, which is huge for us because we can work along with the restoration companies, but also the insurance companies to try and find cost savings for everybody. And in turn, the ultimate customer and benefit or benefactor is the customer or the, the homeowner or the business owner. So the pricing system that our industry uses, it's called Xactimate, uh, one of the many most common pricing systems. For each hole that we make, we get 44 cents per hole, not much. But the faster you can do that, the quicker you make. Xactimate pricing says it takes 36 seconds to crawl on the floor, drill the holes, and then vacuum up all that debris. The aerator takes two seconds. That's 15 times faster. So when you're making 44 cents per hole, if you spent an hour doing that with a drill, maybe you could do 100 holes, that bottom number is second from the, the end. Maybe 100 holes in an hour making about $50. With the aerator, if you were using it for a full hour, you could do 1,500 holes, making you over $600 an hour. So the cost savings and cost benefits of this product are huge. Now we're not stopping at just this one tool. Uh, we are now starting some research and development on our next products. 
uh, which we can't necessarily disclose. Many of them, so out of the 55 products that we will, uh, we have plans to roll out to market, about 18 probably, Charlie, 18 of those are proprietary, so we will patent those along with the aerator, which does have a patent pending, um, which is another process in itself along with a trademark, so I'm happy to answer any questions real like, you know, pertaining to that. Um, but we're excited to get started started on our next product, which we're hoping we might still be able to release before the end of this year. And that's about all I have for you today. At Restoration Tools, we're improving restoration one tool at a time. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. One second. <laughs> trying to do too many things at the same time. Okay, so one million cups, we ask every speaker the same four questions. Um, so for those of you that might remember them, um, unlike me, I've written them down. The first question is, what is the product or service that Jocelyn was mentioning? What is the product or service? Okay, tools made for the restoration industry specifically? Yes. Okay. Correct. Excellent. <laughs> Who is the target audience? Who's Jocelyn's target audience? Anyone who's needing tools to help restore damages in case of water or any other problems. Okay. Anyone who is needing tools to sort out water problems? Mm -hmm. Okay. Speci probably specifically the restoration industry. Yep. Okay, who works with insurance? Uh, insurance or self-pays. Okay. Yeah, so just disaster restoration companies. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anyone have anything to add? Okay. What is amazing about the management team? Nathan. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they have years of experience. Okay. So they've got years of experience. They've lived this. They know... Issues, lived it, problems. eaten it. Yeah. Yeah. So they know how the process works, how to make money. I think it's amazing that you've got 55 products lined up. Mm -hmm. um, I think many startups would love to have 55 products just out there in your imagination, yep. all ready to roll out. Yep. They're all on Charlie's phone. Just hijack Charlie, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so afterwards, Charlie will be walking out at about 10. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. And then lastly, where are you stuck? How can we help you? So right now, if, if you've ever gone through product development, it's a different animal all in its on its own. Um, so we're keeping our options open in, um, right now we're outsourcing our engineering because we're a small you know, startup. We outsource all of that um, through the development and production. Um, and I think we're just trying to refine that process. Okay. Um, and also so. looking, you know, some shipping processes that, it's ultimately the process side that we're looking okay. so refining for the some process. help. Mm -hmm. Has anyone got any thoughts on that? I'm gonna throw you the catch box. And what I encounter a lot of times is there's a lot of people out there who have experience, whether it's the shipping side, the distribution side, or product development side, but not so much at the startup level. That's what I'm encountering is a lot of people have, oh, this is the system we use, but it's for a system or a, a company that's already kind of in place and you know really strong and healthy. And so that's kind of the, the battle. Uh -huh. We're a startup. <laughs> How many of these have you shipped? So we have shipped, uh, we just started work with distributors. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have three distributors we're working with. Um, but we have shipped over 300 and we'll be oh. shipping 300 more in so the next couple that's weeks. That's since April? It's since like, April, okay. yep. Okay. Yeah. So anyone got any thoughts or feedback on distribution or outsourcing your productivity? Has anyone done that in their own business? No. <laughs> okay. If you're watching on the live stream, feel free to come up with something as well. Um, okay. Yep. I know next door we do quite a lot of work with tech and they've got UPS trucks coming okay. all the time. Apart from that, I don't know that much about what they do. And Philocracy sure. came and spoke a while ago about shipping flowers. 
So okay. I'm not sure what their uh, process yeah. is on that. Maybe we can find out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Okay. And then lastly, any general question that you'd like to ask or find out more? Yeah, let me throw this to you so that you can... There we go. Got it. Okay. <laughs> You've got to speak into it so they can pick you up on the live stream. Okay. Um, my question would be uh, for inventors. Um, I, I heard a little tidbit of it. I didn't quite catch it. Um, how you got started, like, you, I think you said you went to a university. I heard that part. Yes. So the first place I would recommend you start is go over to Iger Lab, um, and I can get you their contact information. But Mike Cobert at Iger Lab, they're, one, their resources that they have at their disposal are just enormous. Um, they helped us get set up with um, engineers. They helped us uh, with the, the business plan aspect, because the, the business plan is the biggest part and that's the easiest thing to miss things on um, but Iger Lab was the biggest uh, supporter and helper for us and what's great about them is they're a nonprofit entity so they work with grant funds and through the through Northern Illinois University um, to help try providing support also the SBDC provides some really good resources too but on the actual product side I'd start with Iger Lab yeah. Were you part of the fast pitch competition? At oh, Iger? yes. So, uh, like I said, we've been doing this for about five years. Uh, and during that process, we did their fast pitch program. That's through Iger Lab. It's similar to Shark Tank. Uh, they say it's Shark Tank without the bite. Uh, and that's a really good way for inventors to dip their feet into um, the, the fund development side and you know pitching your product and it teaches you a lot about what you need to know about your product how you try and sell the product and uh, yeah just how to put that all together yeah so how often does fast pitch run is it that's once a year, once a year once and a year. it's this okay. time of year so it's okay. yeah it's okay, coming that's up what I, thought. I that's yeah I think oh. it's usually in September it's a okay, busy well, month. We'll try Correct. and put information out on the Facebook page if that is coming up. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I think for the fast pitch, I think if you've already signed up for it to present, they've got the practice pitches next week, and then okay. I think they do the actual fast pitch the week after that. I should know because we're a sponsor of it, but <laughs> I, I just I, I can look it up by the, by the time we're done. That's okay. <laughs> So another thing, very similar to Fast Pitch, we run Startup Weekend, which happens again about once a year. I've got a feeling that's March time, but I'm maybe just pulling that out of my head. <laughs> um, that's also very similar to Fast Pitch in you've got a group of people presenting an idea, and then everyone settles on maybe two of those ideas. Um, and you try to get it so that you launch that company mm -hmm. over a weekend. So it's a Friday night, all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And another resource that we found extremely helpful, um, especially if you're trying to pitch for funds, so if you're trying to seek investors, because um, that's a whole other topic we could get into, um, but G Beta is another uh, free uh, resource you have to apply to get in um, there's a vetting process but we went through that program a year ago and that was a seven-week program and that was extremely helpful um, in putting together what a pitch should look like and trying to seek investor money and that was a really really great experience and G-Beta is out of Beloit uh, yes they're up in Beloit yeah okay yeah. any other questions oh <laughs> All right. Thank goodness for the internet. But the uh, Iger Lab Fast Pitch is October 9th. Um, initial pitches are 3.30, and the final presentation, which is open to the public, is at 6 p.m. The, they have a little reception for you before that at 5 p.m. It's out at NIU um, on State Street across from Stillman Bay. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Jocelyn? Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming. Normally, this is the part where I hand you a cup. I have one. It's okay. That's Since okay. I was here a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try and get you a second cup so you can put them together. <laughs> they look quite good when there's two together. Right. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, we'll be here next week. Jason will be back and 
taking this spot and I'll be much more comfortable behind the computer screen. Um, feel free to hang around, chat with each other, grab some more coffee, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much.